My name is Bev Thurigood and I'm the uh, director of a business called Floresco Training and Coaching Limited. And we're a specialist menopause uh, awareness training specialist in, uh, in, in the workplace. Menopause or brain, mouth isn't connecting with the brain. I don't know if anybody relates to that. So we've been running for about four and a half years now, going into businesses to help them to understand really the impact of menopause on some of their employees. Not just women, because actually menopause impacts the men in our lives as well. And also it impacts people who maybe don't identify as cis women, so trans men and non-binary. So really menopause affects everybody. But the interesting thing for me when I set up the business was I'd actually walked away from a very long career with the Ministry of Defence, 32 years working for the MOD, 30 of which I spent working for the Royal Air Force. And on my 50th birthday, I was gifted with a hot flush and a great big badge with a number 50 on it, because obviously when you get to 50, people think you can't remember how old you are. And that, for me, was what I thought was the very start of my um, menopause, and I just thought it was hot flushes, because nobody told me there was more to it than that. And actually what happened for the next two years was a, a gradual decline in my confidence, as brain fog kicked in big time, I genuinely thought I was getting uh, early onset dementia at one point. Brain fog, fatigue, anxiety, getting anxious about things I'd never been anxious about in the past, things like just driving to work became a, a bit of a challenge. And after two years of this, I ended up um, asking for 12 months unpaid leave because I thought that would help me to deal with some of the symptoms that I was going through. And like lots of women, I had other stuff going on outside of the workplace as well, caring responsibilities. My daughter was a single mum, just had a brand new baby. So there was lots of stuff going on. And I asked for this uh, 12 months unpaid leave, which was something that the MOD, as a public sector organisation, regularly granted. And even though I had an exemplary record, I'd never been in any real trouble in work, I, was, I wasn't a high maintenance employee, they rejected it, unfortunately, because they had um, a moratorium on recruitment and they couldn't gap my post for a year. So I ended up resigning from my job in 2018 and very, very soon after that, ironically, there's a whole backstory which we haven't got time to do in 15 minutes, um, the Air Force ironically asked me if I would deliver some menopause training. My background was in training. So on World Menopause Day, which is the 18th of October, 2018, I delivered two workshops to employees down in High Wycombe at, at the Air Force's high, um, head office. And I had, in one workshop, 30 women and one man, very brave man, um, talking about their menopause experience. And it was the most enlightening thing I'd ever heard, because I thought I was going through this all on my own, as we do. And I had 30 ladies in this room talking about their experiences and the struggles that they were having in the workplace. How some of them had avoided going for promotion because they thought their brain fog would be um, a problem for them in a new role. Or their confidence had stopped them from taking on a project that they really wanted to take on. And it was just hearing these stories. And actually, at the end of that session, the, the man, very brave man in the room, came up to me and he said, thank you very much for that. He said, I've learned more listening to you and the ladies in this room in three hours than I've learned as, uh, in the last 28 years as a GP. And he was actually the station doctor. And that, for me, was a bit worrying because, actually, if we don't know what's going on, who do we go and speak to? We speak to our GP. So it seemed obvious from there, when I left that, uh, that, those two sessions, that maybe there was a need for employers to understand what it is some women and some employees are experiencing when they go through their menopause transition. So, as I say, for the last four years, four and a half years, that's what we've been doing. And what we do now is we go in and we speak to employees, we talk to managers, we, treat, we teach them how to support those women going through. And it's things like being able to have more flexibility in their working pattern, 
not being rigid on, de on deadlines, recognising that there may be a little bit of uh, support needed. So encouraging managers to be able to have those conversations and not keep it as a taboo subject, which isn't always easy, especially when we've got potentially male managers who don't necessarily disregard it without, you know, as, as being insignificant, but worry about saying the wrong thing, worry about upsetting or offending somebody if they mention menopause. So we teach them how to do that properly. We also talk about where women who are going through menopause stand in terms of employment law, because actually it can feel like we've got no protection. Menopause isn't a protected characteristic. So, you know, like you get sort of sex discrimination and age discrimination and various different sort of characteristics that are protected in law. Menopause isn't at the moment. So a lot of people don't <coughs> realise that if they're feeling that they're being disadvantaged because of their symptoms or they're maybe being put on performance management measures because of their symptoms, they don't realise that actually... If they're discriminated in somewhere, if they're um, disadvantaged in any way, they do actually have some recourse. So they can take it through the courts. Ideally, that's a last resort. But we are seeing more and more tribunals every single year from women who are fed up and they're not standing for it anymore. Now, ideally, we want to catch organisations before they get to the point where we have to take them to tribunal. And that means really helping us to all start to talk more openly about menopause. And what I would say is, looking at my own experience, I probably wasn't great at talking about what I was going through. I kind of felt, if I open up about the fact that I'm struggling with brain fog, they're going to think I'm a bit nuts. They're going to think I can't do my job, so I'm going to keep quiet about it. And in that keeping quiet, my stress levels were going through the roof. So I would say, first of all, the most important thing we can do is to start talking openly about what is going on. And if you don't feel like you can have that conversation with your manager, because sometimes that's a little bit awkward, find a, somebody within the organisation that you can feel trust, you know, that you trust and you can feel comfortable with. That might be your HR department. It might be a mental health first aider. It might be um, asking for a referral maybe to occupational health or tapping into an employee assistance programme if you've got something like that in place. Quite often they'll have access to counselling services. But being able to talk to somebody, there's something about talking about what you're going through that kind of diffuses some of the strength of the symptoms that you might be experiencing. But trust in the fact that you have got protection if you are struggling in the workplace. And some of the things that might be helpful, just asking for things like a, a, a fan, a desk fan, if you're struggling with hot flushes. Or if you're in a, a position where maybe your desk, for example, if you're in a desk-based um, job, is in the worst possible place because you've got no sunlight and you've got no air, fresh air. Just asking the question, is there any chance I could have it, even if it's a temporary move, just somewhere with a bit more fresh air. Asking if you can perhaps take more frequent breaks. When we think about the fact that we've got 40 or more different symptoms and they're all quite diverse, there's no kind of one size fits all for what kind of support in the workplace can be helpful. What I would suggest is if you are struggling, just out of curiosity, let me just ask a question. How many of you are in work? How many of you have found that your symptoms have had an impact on your day-to-day -day work? Okay, so it's a high number, it's a high number. We know that lots and lots of women are doing what I did, which is leave the job because they didn't feel they could ask for help. So the very fact that you've got these issues, what I would say is the best thing you can do is to start to track your symptoms. Keep a notebook. Oh, the Balance app is brilliant. I don't know if anybody's talked about the Balance app today. If you go into your app store and download the Balance app, it's free. You can track your symptoms. So keep a track of them over maybe six weeks. But keep a note of what impact they're having on you. If you're not sleeping well, if you're having hot flushes five or six times a night and you're waking up exhausted, what impact is that likely having on your performance in the workplace? What would help? So think, you know, just make notes of, this is what I'm experiencing. This is the impact it's having. 
And if I was to ask for help in the workplace, what would I need? So it might be I just need a fan. Actually, I just need to be able to start an hour later sometimes if I've had a bad night and not have to feel like I just have to justify it. Now, in the real world, you might not get everything you want. You might find there's some resistance. But actually, if you're not getting the result that you want from your boss, go higher, go and speak to your HR department and see if they can give some support. And it might be that it goes really much broader than that and they start to bring in somebody like us to deliver training to managers. Or it might be an issue that HR isn't even aware of that you're flagging up to them. So it might take a little while, but the worst thing we can do is stay silent about it. So I'm, I'm totally off, off piece here. I've gone completely off what I was talking about. So forgive me if it feels a little bit waffly. Um, am I all right to ask a few questions and, and do it that way? How am I doing for time? Brilliant. Is anybody happy to, to share with me any impact that they've experienced in the workplace that they're struggling with? Um, and then last year, I started to kind of get things. I was just couldn't seem to retain all the information, and I got pulled up on it. And we had a conversation, and I ended up being trying to work for a month to try and deal with that. And actually, once I got the support from the doctor, I had a really good doctor, and they, they talked me through the different options and put me in HRT. And I went back and I had the conversation with the work, and they've been fabulous since. Brilliant. They can't help you if no, we don't let them know. Yeah. And I think the thank you, that's really, that's really important. So first of all, advocating for yourself, recognising there's a need, asking for the help. Um, but not making the assumption that if there isn't help being given, it's because they won't help. Actually, it's, they don't know. You, got, you don't know what you're not told. That's brilliant. Thank you. I have a saying, another one, <laughs> which is, with the right environment, the right support, and the right treatment... There's not a woman I've met yet who can't thrive through their menopause transition. But we have to try and get the environment right. And that means if we're in a working environment, doing what we need to do to try and make sure that our environment fits for us. Getting the support that we need. And again, to, sort of to, to grow on what you've just said, we can't expect support if we don't ask for it because when people don't read minds. And the third one is... Um, uh, <laughs> menopausal brain with the right environment, the right spot and the right treatment, I beg your pardon We've just, I think, did we, did we just have Susanna Onswer? yeah, there are treatments available, not for everybody, I understand that sometimes if you've had uh, something like breast cancer it can be tricky but most of the time there are treatments there and we can support ourselves so with the right environment, support and treatment we can thrive and we don't need to believe and work thank you so much everybody, sorry it was a little bit off the cuff I'm going to be out in the other auditorium. If anybody wants to come and chat about anything, please feel free to. Thank you very much. Thank you.